for us three years ago, and we look forward to, on that, to continuing that kind of engagement. Tonight, we won't be able to huddle around small tables for obvious reasons, but we are looking for your input. We're looking for your guidance as we move forward, and we want to make sure that as we uh, seek this community engagement, you help us learn how best to do this. Um, we've been experimenting with a variety of different engagements on these two different plans for the last nine months. Tonight's meeting is not the beginning of community engagement. In many ways, uh, tonight's meeting and it, the subsequent meeting that we are still scheduling is kind of the wrap up of a very long process uh, for community engagement. Uh, more than 7,300 surveys have been filled out by Houstonians. Um, I'm sorry, three, more than 3,000 surveys filled out by Houstonians. More than 3,500 uh, Houstonians engaged with us in community meetings and public meetings throughout the city. Over the last nine months, 48 focus groups were um, um, held, and at the suggestion of some of our community partners, we launched the Fair Housing Ambassadors Program for the first time in our history, working with individuals in the community to make sure that we, uh, we were using their voice to spread the message of the work that we do and gain the feedback from the people that they were interacting with. So as you can tell, we've been busy long before tonight, and we are going to continue that, uh, that experimenting, that flexibility, but also seeking multiple ways to get your engagement. Um, I do want to recognize that there are concerns with us moving forward with this meeting. Uh, I got two emails directly. One email was specifically concerned with holding this meeting. The other email was very concerned with us canceling a different meeting. So as you can see, some tension pulling in different directions. The thing that I'll say to you is we understand that we are in unprecedented times and we are going to learn with you to figure out how best to do community engagement to make sure the work does not slow down, to make sure the essential services are delivered, but also to make sure that we hear your voice as we move forward. We are committing to that uh, and we are looking forward to learning with you as you pilot models in your organizations, if you're working with an organization, but also uh, as you give us feedback on what we're doing right and what we can do better. To that end, we are already working to reschedule the meeting that was uh, originally scheduled for the 31st. Uh, we're hoping to have that meeting scheduled sometime in the next two weeks. Uh, we're looking for uh, waivers from HUD as we uh, work with our primary funder to make sure that uh, slowness on our part or slow slowness throughout the country does not slow down the funding we need here in the city. Uh, we're looking for alternative ways of communication. We've already received several suggestions for those, and we'll continue to look for additional suggestions on ways we can get this message out differently. And in the coming uh, week or so, we'll look for additional documentation in multiple languages on these two plans, and we are also working to uh, try to translate the entire documents and get them up on our website as quickly as possible. Finally, I'll say that community engagement uh, for much of the last four years has been a continual process for us. We don't hold these meetings once and then disappear. We are out in the community on a regular basis, uh, whether it's be a, be with a, pub, a formal public hearing or informal meetings. Um, later in the year, we will be launching uh, community engagement and public meetings around a comprehensive housing plan. And so this is one of many engagements that we will be doing much of an ongoing engagement, and the two plans that we are looking at and talking about today are plans that can be amended. And so as engagement changes, as we get additional feedback from the community, we'll be working with you to make sure that these plans stay up to date, appropriately amended as possible. Uh, with that, I just want to say that um, our, the purpose of this meeting is to uh, get community or continue to gather community input uh, on our draft 2020 to 2024 consolidated plan. You'll be hearing more about what that means later and as, as well as the 2020 proposed budget and then the draft analysis of impediments to fair housing choice. That's a lot of bureaucratic language, but what it boils down to is we have very important resources from the federal government that can be deployed to ensure that we achieve our mission here at the city, which is ensuring that every Houstonian has a home they can afford in a community where they can thrive. That's our goal, and we need you to help us achieve that goal. 
Um, as it relates to the fair housing, uh, the analysis of impediments around fair housing, we recognize that in the past, these dollars have not always been spent in a way that was fair, in a way that addressed communities throughout the city, especially communities that were often underserved or had fewer resources than other communities. And uh, we are committed here at the city to changing that. We want your, goal, your assistance with changing that, and we hope that tonight's conversation uh, moves us in a good direction on that. Uh, because we are virtual, our format uh, will be different uh, tonight. I, in a moment, I'll be handing the mic over to Chris Robinson, who will be giving a short presentation and reviewing highlights from the plan. During the presentation, please send any questions you might have about the plans through Facebook Live. After the presentation, uh, there will be a public hearing uh, by phone. If you would like to make a three-minute public comment, it could be less than three minutes, but no longer than three minutes, uh, we'll be asking you to call 832-394-8874. That number is 832-394-8874. With that, let me thank you again for joining us tonight. Please give us feedback as we move forward, not only on the plan, but on this virtual meeting. And um, with that, I will hand the mic over to Chris, uh, who will take it from here. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. We are now going to go into the short presentation uh, about the 2020 to 2024 consolidated plan um, and annual action plan and the draft 2020 analysis of fair housing, uh, excuse me, analysis of impediments to fair housing choice. So the short presentation will cover past accomplishments, some of the summary data that we've collected, um, the public engagement findings and our five year strategic goals along with our annual action allocations and proposed budget. So the presentation is meant to provide some sort of context for the public hearing portion that will happen at the concluding um, of this presentation. Our vision here at HCDD is that we provide a home that everyone can afford um, in a community where they can thrive. We always provide affordable housing infrastructure and neighborhood services, along with some community engagement activities or development and supportive services to assist people. And we do that through at least four federal entitlement grants, which is CDBG, HOME, HOPWA, and ESG. And all of these things help to move our vision forward. So what are we doing here tonight? We are working our we're here to get input about our consolidated plan and annual action plan. Um, this is the five-year strategic plan that helps us drive our goals. We have created metrics that will drive, that our funding um, will help to drive our goals throughout the next five years. So we've allocated. Your screen's on. Excuse me, we're having some difficulties. Um, the consolidated plan and the annual action plan, again, it's our five-year strategic plan that will drive what we do over the next five years. We allocate our entitlement grants to our activities um, in the annual action plan for the program year 2020. Um, and this plan just talks about improving housing, our public facilities, and how we can assist families that are low and moderate income. Our 
our 2020 analysis of impediments to fair housing, what we also call the AI, um, it reviews several barriers that impede fair housing, and it also helps to inform those strategies that we use here at HCDD um, and with other departments to affirmatively further fair housing. So what we've heard so far, um, and this is based on our data research um, and through our public engagement process that we've been going through since June of 2019, our population has increased. Our population is now about 2.3 million people. About 10% account for persons with disabilities. And almost, almost half of the labor force, um, or excuse me, almost half of the population makes up the labor force here in Houston. We have almost 850,000 households that are accounted for through census data. Um, and the median income has increased uh, to $51,000. The median income is about $160,000 and median rent prices are almost $1,000. Our LMI or low to moderate households make up about 51% of our population and 39% of the, pop the population um, is experiencing housing conditions. This is anything that um, is structurally based, electrical, plumbing, or mechanical defects in the home. Um, and sometimes these homes can be substandard um, and they may be deficient and not suitable for rehabilitation. And then just additionally, 32% of households also experience lead risks. Throughout our data process, uh, we've reviewed um, median home values from 2000 to 2016. And what we found is that the sale prices and rent prices are not keeping up with income. House prices have increased by almost, uh, or yeah, over 100%, and rent prices have increased by 69%. And at the same time, income has only increased by 40%. Now, we also assessed um, housing cost burden. Um, and what you'll see in this slide is cost burden households versus severely cost burden households. What does that mean? So cost burden households are um, families that are spending between 30 to 50% of their income, their household income on rent, mortgage, and utilities. And severely cost burden households are spending 50% or more on their housing costs. At the low to moderate income um, levels, um, we see that at least 65% of those households are experiencing uh, housing cost burdens and 14.3 are experiencing severe cost burdens with respect to housing. And across the board, we saw that every income level is actually experiencing problems but the highest rate of problems is occurring at our extremely low income levels. Since July of 2019, we've engaged with the public. Uh, we've talked to many people, gone to many community meetings. We have done over three, or received over 3,000 surveys. Uh, we've had at least 3,500 participate in our community meetings. We've hosted or attended at least 75 community meetings or public meetings, and then we've also established our Fair Housing Ambassadors Program. And this was an attempt for us to reach populations that we couldn't reach at HCDD alone, and we needed help getting into certain communities, and we did that through this program. In the express survey, we talked to almost 800 people. And of those people, we found out that 20% did not even know what fair housing was. We found out that almost 13% experienced housing discrimination in the past five years. And then almost 51% of people did not know how to report housing discrimination. In our community needs survey, uh, we asked several questions. And one of those questions dealt with housing challenges. Almost 55% of homes uh, or households 
um, had trouble getting to and from home when it was raining. 38% of those people um, had trouble getting repairs and almost a third also had trouble finding a better place to live. Uh, another concern for households was paying for home insurance. And I'll just say that the greatest challenges dealt with um, in this survey um, were all related to housing or weather conditions and flooding. Our community needs survey asked also about improvements that needed to be made in the neighborhood. Um, and what we found in social services is that mental health services was um, one of the services that needed the most improvement. And for neighborhood services, we discovered that the greatest challenges were dealing with infrastructure, meaning street maintenance, sidewalk maintenance, and flooding drainage. And then, of course, we're still concerned about health and safety code enforcement. Some of the barriers to affordable housing um, include our current market conditions, travel and transportation costs, our quality of housing, um, and the list really goes on, but we've included some here in this slide um, just to talk about how or to show what kinds of things are impeding people from affordable housing. Now, with the respect to the analysis of impediments to fair housing choice, we discovered, or we at least amended the list of impediments. Uh, previously, we had a longer list, but we consolidated some of these. And we ended up on a list of 12 impediments, some that include discrimination in housing, segregation of housing patterns, a lack of financial education, we're still experiencing nimbyism resistance, and a lack of transportation op excuse me, options. And what are we doing to combat those imp impediments? We have written down 30 action items to address impediments of fair, e impediments of fair housing that we listed in our plan. And some of those actions include educating people about fair housing, preserving and constructing affordable homes, and completing the regional study, a comprehensive regional study about housing. For our consolidated plan, we have also, um, we've taken a look at the past. And what we found is that we've reached over 5,000 people in fair housing calls. We've launched uh, three fair housing campaigns. It touched almost 2 million people. We funded rehabs, we've repaired homes. We have provided almost 200 low and moderate income families with down payment assistance as well. In addition to that, we supported the creation of the Houston Community Land Trust and the expansion of the, house, the Houston Land Bank. And about 26 uh, new or improved communities were funded, uh, new community facilities were funded. Um, and I mean, our strategic goals um, will carry on into the next five years. So these goals, these numeric metrics will change, but the overall strategies will remain the same. In that we want to preserve and expand the supply of affordable housing. Um, and this, the list of our strategic goals is based on our research that we've done over the past nine months. We've talked to so many residents and found that these strategic goals will help drive our funding over the next five years. Our grant allocations uh, have stayed steady since 2016. Um, so based on the HUD February 14th posting of grant allocations, these are the amounts that we are expected to receive for the almost $50 million um, in the program year 2020. Our total allocation amount is $47,203,000, million, um, sorry, $203,607. Our CDBG funding will amount to 24,000, I'm sorry, 24 million. Our home, about 10 million. 
our HOPWA about 10.3 million and ESG 2.1. For our public services, we've allocated uh, $3.7 million, the ESG match, um, about $500,000 uh, combined. This is about $4.5 million for public services and ESG. We've also allocated $4.6 million for public facilities and $7.6 million for home repairs and re excuse me, remediation activities. And our economic development activities anticipates using 20, excuse me, $250,000 to fund prior year activities that will continue through program year 2020. And our code enforcement will also fund activities totaling approximately $2.9 million. Some of our anticipated accomplishments uh, include providing public services to almost 18,000 households, improving two public facilities, uh, 32,000 code enforcement visits, and uh, some lead hazard abatement homes of about 50 homes, constructing 75 affordable rental homes, and repairing about 250 homes. For our 2020 grant allocation of home, we uh, have anticipated spending about $4.5 million for multifamily rehabilitations and developments. We've also budgeted for $1.7 million for uh, single family developments, $3 million for tenant based rental assistance, and $1 million for planning and administration. Our anticipated accomplishments for 2020 using the home funds uh, will include multifamily developments, our home TIBRA or the tenant-based tenant rental assistance, and single-family home development as well. The 2020 grant allocation for HOPWA includes budgeting uh, $2.2 million for operating costs, $2.1 million for supportive services, 2.4 million for tenant-based tenant rental assistance, 2.4 million for short-term rental mortgage and utility subsidies, and $100,000 for resource identification, and 1 million for administration. Our anticipated accomplishments for 2020 using HOPWA funds um, includes assisting about 1.7, or excuse me, 1,700 households with HOPWA funding, um, and this includes the tenant-based, uh, the short-term rental mortgage utility and utility subsidies, and any permanent or transitional facilities serving households. Our 2020 grant allocation for ESG includes 84 million for the homeless management information system, approximately 757,000 for support, supportive services, about 5, 000, excuse me, 536,000 for homeless prevention, and about 568,000 for rapid rehousing, which assists persons who have recently become homeless with finding a new home, and about $100,000 for administration. Our anticipated goals uh, for ESG include assisting persons uh, with homelessness prevention, about 85 households with rapid rehousing services, and another 1,000 persons with um, emergency shelters. Our draft 2020 and 2024 consolidated plan and annual action plan are up. They are posted online and are available for comment now through April 20, excuse me, now through April 16, 2020. Um, the following plan, the plans are actually located online at houstontx.gov forward slash housing forward slash caper dot html um, and copies can be obtained at our office location at 2100 Travis at, on the ninth floor. Um, and comments are, they can be emailed to HCDD planning at houstontx.gov GOV, or they can be mailed to HCDD um, at the attention of planning and grants management 
at the office of 2100 Travis uh, on the ninth floor, Houston, Texas, 77002. Now we're opening up our lines to take calls. Um, the call-in number is 832-394-8874, or you can ask questions through Facebook Live. Now we'll be transitioning into our public hearing, and thank you for your time. Good evening. My name is Derek Sellers. I am an assistant director here in the House Community Development Department at the City of Houston. Uh, we're moving into the public hearing portion of the evening. At this uh, moment, uh, we're inviting you to please call in. As Chris mentioned, uh, the number is 832-394-8874. Uh, we want your comments. We want to hear your feedback on the, the information that was presented by Chris a few minutes ago on our draft documents that are on our website or on how we're doing uh, implementing our programs, our projects, and our, uh, as we spend these federal funds. So please call in. Um, each speaker is gonna be given three minutes to provide their testimony, and when you call in and we have you on the line, we'll ask that you provide your name first, state it first, and then we'll give you three minutes. Uh, all calls will be heard in the order they were received, and uh, you're not allowed to yield time to another person. Each person's given their own opportunity to provide their three minute comments. Uh, this testimony is recorded and transcribed and we will be including your comments as part of this document. And then after that, we'll also be providing our responses to your comments. Uh, we mentioned a few minutes ago where those, uh, where those documents can be seen. Um, so we welcome you to please visit our website and view that. Um, in addition to that, we're gonna be taking questions through Facebook Live. Um, and so we'll kind of interweave some of these together as we have uh, them available. And right now we have one up from Alan. Uh, his question is, the ESG allocation seems really low relative to the other three categories. And that is true. It is a lower amount um, for, uh, ESG stands for Emergency Solutions Grants. It's the grant we receive from HUD to help with homelessness issues, prevention, rapid rehousing, um, operations of homeless shelters and such. Uh, but however, if you look at the allocation amounts uh, relative to the last few years, it's been about steady, slightly increased. It's in line with what we've received in previous years. Um, if this is something you think is important, so especially at the time we're in dealing with the COVID issue, uh, speak to your congressional representatives to see what we can do about getting more funding to assist uh, there. Um, it looks like we have another question. So the question we have up is who can help with my Harvey app? Uh, we have a, uh, a HOPE program, uh, Houston Owner, Homeowner Assistance Program. Um, we have the, uh, uh, if you call into our main line, it can be found on our website. We'll direct you to the right person to make sure that you're getting the responses that you need uh, to give you the updates on your Harvey app, let you know where you're at in the queue and if there's anything outstanding that we need to get from you to assist. So the next question is coming up. Um, it says, will your offices still be open to pick up documents due to the pandemic? So as uh, the director mentioned, we are open for business, um, but we are also, uh, it's by Adam, we're trying to mitigate uh, um, our exposure, our interaction with the public and back and forth. What we can do is uh, you give us a call and we'll look at see what we can do to best facilitate uh, passing along those documents. We're doing the best we can to provide uh, documents by email if possible, including taking pictures and texting if that's uh, if that's something that you can do, but if all else fails, we'll work with you to see what our best methods to get those documents from you so that we can keep this process moving forward. Um, it looks like we also have a comment. So uh, caller, if you'll just state your name and then you'll have three minutes to speak. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes. Great. My name is Lori Campiel Harris. I am the executive director of 
for the Houston Housing Collaborative and a longtime national housing justice advocate. Since 2016, the Houston Housing Collaborative has united the voices of over 120 unique organizations and individuals, including housing practitioners, not-for-profit builders, developers, neighborhood associations, advocacy groups, and community residents. And we all deeply care, just like HCDD does, about the equitable, resilient, and affordable housing for all of Houston. We are thankful for the ongoing community engagement and processes that continue to progress with the time, effort, and energy by the entire HCDD team. Your work is appreciated in particular during these times of heightened crisis like today. We ask HCDD to have these draft plans to include in the creation of a resilient housing system that can provide equitable, resilient, and affordable housing for all of Houston's residents. Everyone deserves affordable and resilient housing, which provides access to economic opportunities and a high quality of life. Housing serves as a cornerstone of access to economic opportunity, transportation, quality education, health care, and many other systems responsible for that high quality of life. Housing instability results um, from issues such as high cost displacement or natural disasters, or as we're facing now, a uh, health crisis. These challenges are particularly acute for populations that are already vulnerable, such as people of color, immigrants, single parents, domestic violence survivors, and our very low income residents. Graded with this consolidated plan that you have presented, we are excited to hear that the city of Houston is looking to create and implement a comprehensive housing plan that uses a systems approach to address Houston's housing challenges. We hope that this plan would articulate strategies, goals, and priorities for resilient affordable housing and provide a concrete roadmap for the next 20 years. Having such a roadmap would ensure that local government has a strategy not only for existing challenges, but a consistent approach to new issues and opportunities that arise from these national policies and initiatives. We urge you to prioritize the creation of that comprehensive housing plan that will work in conjunction with the plans that you presented tonight. We ask HCDD to create a committee or task force made up of key diverse stakeholders that would provide thinking, reactions, and support of that development of the critical need of a comprehensive housing plan. This committee or task force is your additional arm to community engagement, which is the basis for ethical policy and program development, especially on issues as complex and place based as housing. Local government can proactively engage with diverse stakeholders on this committee and through the committee to learn from the expertise, whether it is a resident's lived experience, a not-for-profit developer's struggle with financing, or an advocacy organization's analysis, analysis of resilience issues. This engagement is necessary for both citywide policies and neighborhood projects. The Complete Communities Initiative has demonstrated that each community has its own views on housing challenges and appropriate local roles and solutions. So we look forward to working with HCDD um, as you guys create that comprehensive housing plan that would be graded with the draft plan that you have presented tonight, along with the creation of that committee or task force or advisory group that could work with you all. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, it appears we have another question that has come through from uh, Facebook Live. Um, it says, what type of emergency aid is being offered to the multifamily sector and residents during the current, this current crisis? Um, we are actively working with our, with our partners to determine their needs around this, looking at our available funds to see where we can make shifts to make funding available. Um, and so we, uh, we hope as we have those continuing conversations and as we look at what the federal government is choosing to do in their aid package, that we'll be rolling out additional funding and programs to assist as we move through this crisis. So do we have anybody else that wants to offer a public comment? Um, or if you'd like to present your uh, question through Facebook Live. Give uh, just a couple more minutes real quick. And once again, that number is 
it looks like we may have an incoming call. So give it just a second and we can get that transfer in. So as the director was presenting earlier in the night, we are looking at doing this again, potentially in about two weeks. Um, as that information becomes available, we will be passing it along. We'll be posting it on our website, on our social media, and sharing it through all the avenues that we have available to us to get engagement and make sure that uh, you'll have further opportunities to comment on the draft documents. So commenter, uh, will you please state your name and then uh, you'll have three minutes to provide your, your comment. Hi, this is Mary Lawler. I'm the Executive Director of Avenue Community Development Corporation. And I want to uh, thank the department and all the staff for holding this hearing in this uh, difficult time. Uh, appreciate the information that was presented today. Um, I uh, want to echo the comments of uh, Lori Pantillo Harris from the Houston Housing Collaborative about uh, the need for a comprehensive housing plan for the city of Houston. I'm struck uh, by the uh, presentation by the um, fairly low number of units, uh, housing units that can be produced with the very limited uh, federal funds that Houston has available. And uh, with a comprehensive housing plan, the city could um, really take an overall look at all of the resources that are available and uh, set uh, goals for the different types of housing that can be produced to meet the needs of the different populations uh, in the city who need housing assistance. So again, um, thank you for all the work uh, that went into uh, this hearing and the presentation and uh, Avenue and others in the Houston Housing Collaborative look forward to uh, working collaboratively with the city on uh, the production of Thank you. Thank you for your comment. All right, so we'll do one last call for uh, comments and then for questions and then hearing none, we'll uh, get this wrapped up. All right, so um, as we look to close out the evening, uh, first we wanna thank you for viewing the presentation on Facebook Live uh, through HTV uh, on the call-in line that we have available here. Uh, we would like to hear your feedback after this, even through Facebook Live, to let us know what worked, what didn't work, what we can do better um, as we look to do this again in a couple weeks, but also as we look at future opportunities to provide something similar. Your feedback is important to us. Uh, uh, it's good critique to help make this better. Um, a copy of this presentation will be posted on our website very soon for viewing and for you to be able to share with others that maybe couldn't make it tonight. And once again, we'll be looking to do this again in a couple of weeks. Uh, please visit our website at uh, houstontx.gov slash housing to find out more information about our department, our programs, our projects, uh, and to view these documents to get the latest, greatest news on what's going on. Um, and with all that being said, we want you to have a great evening, and thank you for attending, and we'll see you soon. Thanks.